I moved out on my own just a few months ago. My house is in a pretty decent neighborhood and at 25, going on 26, I'm doing a pretty good career-wise. Socially, however, I am lacking. I mean, yes, I had friends back where I used to live, but after high school and college, everyone just kind of went their separate ways, which is understandable. Being high-functioning autistic, it's kind of hard for me to meet new people, especially when your autism just makes even picking up phone calls to your parents seem like a chore. I did manage to find a good friend with me, my best friend and roommate, Ninx. She is the cutest black cat I've ever seen, and my dad found her for me about 15 years ago when she was just a kitten. We lived together in this two-story house for about two or three months. It was the night before Halloween. I was carving a pumpkin for a jack-o'-lantern. This would be my first Halloween alone, but my parents were coming up for my birthday on the 2nd of November. I was pretty congested. It was a bad cough that I called out of work, which I don't often do so. Still, I wanted to be a nice guy and try to hand out candy. Hell, I just needed to socialize a little bit. Who knew, maybe one of the neighbors would be a nice lady my age? I shrugged sympathetically, knowing my luck that even if I were to try hard to talk to these people, I finished my jack-o'-lantern while listening to some golf music to set the mood and all the while sniffling and trying to pop my ears. I made a career out of my artistic skills. Luckily, this did not apply to jack-o'-lanterns though. Sadly, they fit the finished product of my pumpkin carving, which broke the carving knives and took a serrated kitchen knife to finish. It looked disfigured, demon-like with facial tech, but I both as- was both assumed and slightly disturbed by what my clumsy hands created but I still was satisfied enough to keep it. The night went pretty well, save for my congested throat and chest and sinus pressure. I received plenty of reactions to my jack o lantern ranging from laughs to slight recoils of terror. As the evening went by, trick-or-treaters became even more disturbed. By the end of the night, I found out why. I took out the pumpkin, and I had started to out the look like an abomination that shriveled into something, what literally looked like a twisted skull. I coughed and chuckled, feeling somewhat sympathetic over it. I felt as if I wanted to shrivel up too. I woke up probably around noon the next day, feeling even worse than last night. I was dizzy as hell and I couldn't breathe, and I was almost completely deaf. My ears rang, it felt as if they would explode. I didn't want to get up, I had no reason to, but I did anyway. At least I wanted to check the mail or get something to eat or and maybe take some congestant. I stumbled downstairs and shuffled outside on my robe and slippers to get out to the mail. I noticed that my pumpkin had vanished. I had already planned on throwing it out anyway, but I was still midly surprised that it was just gone. Someone must have stole it either late last night or this morning. I didn't care. I'm just sick and they did me a favor anyway. I went inside the mail and fought every little of it. I had myself a bowl of chicken noodle soup and a Coke as I took my meds. This shuffled upstairs, I lie in bed to watch TV in my room. As crappy as I felt, I didn't want to do anything else. I awoke at 8.36 and with my clock told me, my TV was still playing. I felt even more dead to the world. I could barely lift my head. When I finally managed to do so, I saw Ninx curled up at my feet. It was such a pre-precious sight, and seeing my hoarse voice said, Hi, Nixie. She didn't respond. She must have fallen asleep, and when I reached to feel her body, it felt stiff and cold. She didn't move. Oh, God. She was dead. My best friend for 15 years, dead beside me while I slept. My hands shook and I immediately began to weep. I wept consciously, continuously, my head feeling un- full and unable to really hear my own sobs and call- clogged ears. Even worse, my sobs were interrupted by a worsening coughing fits. How could this happen to me? And on my day before my birthday, no less, I sobbed and coughed bitterly as the irony hit me that my birthday was known for as the Hispanic Day of the Dead. Happy birthday to me, Screw my life. 
Around midnight, I finally stood up. Although teetering, I took my cat's lifeless body downstairs and got a shovel out of my garage. I went to my backyard, dug a hole next to my room window. I placed a stone where I buried her to mark her grave, in memory of my best friend I ever had. As I dizzily walked back to my house in a mix of soft sobs, sniffles, and coughs, I thought about how this could have probably be a sign that I need to get out and socialize more. <sighs> Curse my autism. My dad's right. I need friends. My thoughts were interrupted when I got to my front porch and noticed that the pumpkin that was sitting there in the darkness. I mistook it for the jack-o'-lantern I thought had been taken. But when I got closer, I noticed that the light inside was red, almost as if it was a lead inside it. And the pumpkin was black as the night. The face, a cat's face, was carved into the black pumpkin. What psychopath would do this to me? Was I being mocked? Who the hell was watching me? To know that I just buried my black cat? And made a freaking edgy, edgy joke of her in my pumpkin? I screamed in the mixture of rage and grief as I hurled the pumpkin over to the street in front of my house, dashing it into pieces and watching the red light disperse. I then stumbled inside feeling even sicker than before. I awoke up three hours later, my face down on my couch. By me, my face was literally on the seat of the couch. The rest of me was on the floor. I must have collapsed in a mixture of grief, confusion, anger, and sickness. I attempted to stand up and walk, but after reaching my recliner, I collapsed again. At this point, I was so dead to the world that I couldn't hear at all. The cold mixed with the howled out and of losing ninks made it impossible to feel anything. I wanted to go to sleep forever, knowing that it was probably stupid of me, and feeling the inability to actually go to sleep. I decided to see what was on TV. I picked up the remote for the downstairs TV and clicked on it. I clicked on the remote again. What the hell? I thought out loud. I saw the lead on the remote came on, but why wasn't the TV not come on? Don't tell me it's just dead too. I just bought the dead thing. For the first time today, I felt something other than grief. Strangely, I welcomed it. My frustration turned into slight amusement when I considered derivative though I might find the pumpkin on my porch, this time for my TV. Out of sheer curiosity, I decided to actually walk outside and check. I slowly but surely checked the counter track with the lightheaded feeling I was having and shuffled to the floor. Sure enough, as I opened the door, I saw a different shaped colored pumpkin than before. I laughed my ass off, even as screwed up as I, I felt. I laughed as I was having coughing fits. Whoever the psychopath was leaving pumpkins out who died on my porch sure had a sense of humor. I think my head with my head cold was a little delirious. Because of that situation, it could have been unnerving. All the things I considered. After I stood back up, cackling hoarsely and coughing. I noticed a pumpkin skin color. It wasn't color I normally saw in pumpkins. It had a fleshly olive color to it. My stomach sank when I looked down at the back to the pumpkin. It was my skin tone. I panicked and the next thing I remember, I was in front of the pumpkin as it just appeared there. The pumpkin was unlit and with all of it being 3 a.m. I could barely make out what it was. Suddenly, the jack-o'-lantern lit up, revealing to be other than I dreaded to see. It was my face. Oh no, oh hell no. These pumpkins weren't marked of who died. They were warnings. Some serial killer must be making targets with jack-o'-lanterns or something. Shit. Panicking, I bolted inside. More like floated, because actually I was dizzy as I felt. I stared, started upstairs to my bedroom, in my ninja sword out to get it from under my pillow. My, this asshole wasn't going to take it without a fight. As I got halfway upstairs, the realization hit me. If this shows jack o lantern killer had killed Ninx, how could it make it look like she died of natural causes? I got my answer as I round out the corner into my bedroom. I saw Ninx curled up on my bed as I found her earlier, as if I hadn't buried her. The lie next to her was my limp body. I couldn't tell if I was horrified or stunned, so real of this creature, as I have just seen. Out of my reflex, I gasped. This sent me into a coughing fit, and even worse than the previous one. I coughed as if my lungs were trying to come up. 
My head was pounding as I whooped down and hacked, and I collapsed onto the floor as my vision blurred, and then it narrowed. A blueberry read, Leonard Timothy Simid, November 2nd, 1986, to November 2nd, 2012. After recognizing two of the days being rewritten with temperatures above 100 degrees, Leonard succumbed at 3.33 a.m. on his 26th birthday. His father and mother who came to visit found him lifeless on his bed with the morning. He was lying with his beloved feline, Minx. Forsen concluded that after 15 long years, she had died of old age and curled up next to her best friend to be merely hours prior. Well, my pretties, that was Leonard's Pumpkins, a creepypasta. My final thoughts on this story? This is actually a really good creepypasta. I mean, I'll take it by the fact that the protagonist of this story basically explains that he has a cold and that, and he ends up dying in that. So the whole thing of its own self after he carved the jack-o'-lantern and some messed up shit was happening in this story, I have a feeling that this Leonard person was or well the protagonist of this story was probably having some hallucination or nightmare or something seeing you know those pumpkins you know coming around and start you know doing really weird and freaky things i mean i have a feeling that this could be maybe just some dream that the protagonist is having or it could be some hallucination unfortunately we will never know because at this case it's just in it's just something okay I honestly don't understand why that there wasn't really properly explained some parts, but I still find this story to be, you know, it's a still a good story. I found it to be cool. I honestly really do like the story, and yeah, it's honestly, you know, a pretty good concept for it. And I do have to say, I really do like how well the story is in that. I mean, I've seen a couple narrators actually narrated it, so... That's kind of why I decided to, you know, why not not do a story of this? Because, you know, I honestly wanted to do a creepypasta on Halloween. Well, I, I mean, I've done a couple of them, but this one honestly was pretty good. I mean, it's honestly still a really good story for what it is, if I'm being completely honest. I mean... With the whole story of its own self, it honestly just, it's still a pretty well-made story. To be fair, I honestly still really enjoyed it. And this honestly was still a really great story for what it is. Especially with the whole, um, basically with the concept and all. And with all due sincerity, the story was well-made and written. It does have pretty good grammar in that and sentence structuring. I mean... In all due reality, I have a feeling that this person in the story is probably hallucinating or something, which could explain, you know, what happened in that. But I have a feeling if he was just hallucinating, then that could be, you know, possibility. Or maybe it could be him dreaming or something. But if it's him actually died, it actually it actually really makes me wonder why, what did this serial killer did to him and his cat? But still, it's still a really interesting concept, though. I really do enjoy this story. It's on the regular Creepypasta Wiki. I recommend you guys take a look at it if you haven't. It's still a really good story. I recommend it. So, anyways, uh, with that being the case, that being said, I'm going to sit here and just say that um, I don't know who the original author of this story is. So, I'm going to leave it as anonymous for now. If I ever do find out who the original author of this story is, like if he or she or whoever um, pops on, um, you know, this channel or something, sees the story, he or she or someone can, the author can mainly, you know, let me know they're the writers of the story in the comments below. And if they are, I will be sure to give them proper credit. So I still find this story to be, you know, a, it's enjoyable. I definitely got to say, I like this one. It's really good, well made, but it honestly has me confused considering seeing that this um, protagonist either had um, either had a hallucination or 
or at the very least, maybe he was dreaming or something else happened. I don't really know. But all they could say is, well, it's hard to say. I mean, I have two theories that may be possible, but you guys might be able to explain it if you want. So anyways, with that being said and that being the case, I'm going to sit here and say, this is simply my own personal opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these um, creepypastas. And this is simply my own personal thoughts. I'm going to give this story a 10 out of 10. It's a great creepypasta. It's definitely well made. I definitely can see all this being the case. I definitely really like this story. It's a really awesome one. And I recommend you guys reading this one if you haven't. So anyways, with that being said, with that being the case, what did you guys personally think of this creepypasta? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done personally helped make this story a lot better. Feel free to leave me now what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Lion Queen. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications to when I upload so that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.